Do you recognize that iconic intro? While it's actually just a game over sound from a Famicom game, you've probably heard it from watching creators a part of Normal Boots, which was a content portal and group. Nowadays, it's mainly just a forgotten brand that many popular gaming YouTubers used to be a part of. It's been closed and reopened and rehauled to a shell of what it once was. Normal Boots was created by now popular content creators John Tron and Peanut Butter Gamer in late 2010. When it was created, they were basically nobodies. The reason for its existence was to have a website to host their content and collect advertisement revenue. But if you watch the videos on our site, we get revenue, which we can then use to make better videos for you. See, it's all about you. And also to start and host a community of gamers. Nowadays, we take it for granted how relatively easy it is to monetize your content. Back then, being in the YouTube Partner Program was a luxury, and the money wasn't like how it is now. So a lot of creators would post their content onto YouTube to drive traffic to their website and make money through ads on there. And on their website, to help incentivize the audience to get off YouTube, they would release their content on there first. That's why when you rewatch old AVGN episodes on YouTube, there's a logo for another website with the original air date. John and PBG met while working at Screw Attack, a video game media company, and they left to start Normal Boots. The name is a parody of how RPG video games label items. The early days of the website saw the addition of some now forgotten creators, such as Cold Morning and Underbelly. Cold Morning only ever passed 500 subscribers on YouTube. They were the first to leave for unknown reasons. They left Normal Boots around October 2011, and they haven't posted online since March 2014. From my understanding, they were replaced by The Completionist. Underbelly, which did skit comedy, left in June 2012, quickly being replaced by Did You Know Gaming. Unlike Cold Morning, the Underbelly channel was somewhat popular. As of now, they have about 50,000 subscribers. Their channel didn't last much longer after leaving Normal Boots. They tried to relaunch in April 2017, although it was very short-lived, and they've been inactive since. However, they've recently re-entered the public consciousness due to the channel being featured in the most recent viral video essay by H Bomber Guy. Apparently, well, apparently one of their videos contains plagiarism. Looking at these creators who left early on, especially Cold Morning, it's very depressing. It's like researching Pete Best, the drummer who left the Beatles right before their fame. Someone who was so close to fame and fortune, but either just weren't good enough or didn't stick around long enough to achieve it. And now their channels just sit there, collecting dust. The main goal of the Normal Boots website would change over the years. It was closed in 2012, as the creators who operated it no longer depended on it to profit off their content. The channels listed on the website when they closed were JonTron, PBG, Continue, The Completionist, Indie Game, Searchlight, and Did You Know Gaming. Prior to Normal Boots reopening in 2014, Shane Gill of Did You Know Gaming launched Hidden Block, a very similar content group to Normal Boots. It became affiliated after Normal Boots' relaunch, as Did You Know Gaming would be a part of both groups. Now, why was Normal Boots relaunched? Well, because they had a new reason to run the website for hosting content that was having issues staying up on YouTube, as creators were facing issues with copyright takedowns around this time. So if they couldn't host Post the video on YouTube, the creator would make a video announcing the release of the video on their YouTube channel and tell their audience if they wanted to watch it, they had to go to the Normal Boots website. In 2016, a fan-made Normal Boots dating sim was released, with many of the creators actually providing their voices for the game. This marks the end of the Normal Boots golden age. It's all downhill from here. From 2017 to 2019, notable creators even one of the founders would depart, seemingly due to controversies they got involved with. Norma Boots would relaunch again in 2021 with new creators like Chatronic, but it's been abandoned once again it seems. In today's video, we're going to look at the careers of many creators who were once, or still are, a part of Norma Boots, and see how they're doing now, and if they left, what caused them to leave. This is in no particular order. 
Peanut Butter Gamer, real name Austin Hargrave, was one of the two original members of Normal Boots. For a bit, he was actually more popular than JonTron, although John would end up surpassing his popularity by a lot. PBG made videos as a child, but when he turned 19 was when he started creating content under the name Peanut Butter Gamer. The oldest video currently on his channel was released in October 2009. He produced humorous video editorials about games, with skits and the likes. Similar to the AVGN, but he had his own style to it. His content seemed to focus more on the Nintendo 64 era, which makes sense as he didn't grow up in the NES era like the AVGN did. Although, like all retro gaming channels, he didn't shy away from talking about the NES because, I mean, if you're a retro gaming channel, it's like, how could you, how could you not talk about the NES? Prior to Normal Boots, he worked at Screw Attack, which is where he met JonTron. Some of the most popular videos he made was where he would show off and discuss weird hacks he did in popular video games. The most successful video he ever made was called Super Mario 64 Hacking, and it has 13 million views. He was also known for producing videos relating to horror elements in games, like urban legends and creepypastas, running a series called The G-Files, with some of these being his most viewed videos. Other things you may know PBG for was Zelda Month. For years, every November on his channel, he would release numerous videos about the Legend of Zelda. He also made a lot of popular content about children's games, such as those based off the Arthur franchise. And also Putt-Putt, which is a pretty infamous point-and-click adventure game released on PC for kids. On his second channel called PBG Gameplay, he hosted a beloved Let's Play of Minecraft Hardcore. On this mode of Minecraft, if you get game overed, you can't respond. The first season included guests like JonTron, The Completionists, and more, all playing on the same world at the same time. Time. PBG never had any crazy or noteworthy drama that surrounded him. He's he's kept a pretty clean record, unlike some of the other creators in this video. Nowadays, his channel does pretty well, although it's nowhere near the powerhouse it once was. It isn't common for him to crack a million views on a video anymore. As of me writing this, he is still a part of whatever remains of Normal Boots, and he just became a father. So congratulations to him. Jonathan Arian Jafari, more commonly known as JonTron, was one of the original founders of Normal Boots and their biggest star. He's Iranian-Hungarian and the son of immigrants. Growing up, he was a fan of video games and partook in musical theater. He started posting content as far back as 2003, posting animations starring anthropomorphic onions. For a brief while in 2010, he was a part of Screw Attack, which is a common theme among a few of the Normal Boots creators. He eclipsed people like the AVGN in popularity by a long shot. John became an actual figure in pop culture. His videos were humorous, he had a very unique style to it, and they were slickly edited, which made them beloved. While he started his career talking about old video games, he eventually moved on to discussing movies, and even got to work with Disney on a Star Wars series to promote The Force Awakens. Although nowadays, most people probably don't even know him as a retro game reviewer or as a film critic. They all likely know him as the Flex Tape Guy. A video of John mocking the commercials of the product has obtained over 70 million views, and with a sequel that got almost 30 million. John's other videos still get millions upon millions of views even to this day. He was the most popular Normal Boots creator back then, and even today, nobody, nobody even comes close to his popularity that was a part of that brand. We're getting too far ahead of ourselves though. Prior to John Tron, he had a series called The Tales of Super John, where he joked about topics like communism. Prepare for a new age of Super John and possibly communism. Uh, to say the least, I was proud of my revolutionary decree and decided to move on to greater things. The JonTron channel started in 2010 with a two-part review of Daikatana for Nintendo 64. His career would really take off after his video about Dino City reached the front page of Reddit in 2011. This video is also how Eagle Raptor, real name Aaron Hansen, discovered him. 
Over the past decade, John Tron has done many things. He was a part of the original duo of Game Grumps, a popular Let's Play channel with a cult fanbase. He would leave after about a year, which led to speculation as to why. It was a very successful channel, and it, and it wasn't hard to make an episode. All we had to do was record him and his co-host Aaron playing some games, pass the footage to a video editor, and collect a check. There's still discussion about this that goes on to this very day, and there's a lot of of wild conspiracy theories. The Game Grumps channel is still around today, although I think most would agree its glory days are long over. For other noteworthy things Sean got to do, like I said, he did a series on Star Wars in partnership with Disney. While Jean's videos have always been of a higher quality, due to Disney being involved, these videos have a pretty insane production value. Although some fans aren't the happiest with them, at least with the first few episodes, likely due to the fact that Jean didn't even direct them, he would direct the later episodes, and that seems to have paid off. His fans were really happy with the final episode, as Aaron from Game Grumps appeared in it, a nice little reunion after there was speculation of the two not being on good terms. Listen, there's a lot of esoteric JonTron lore I would love to go over. Maybe someday we can go into great detail about it all, but John is only one of the many people we are talking about today. So let's just jump to the most infamous part of his career already. Now, John's departure from Normal Boots happened around the time of a major controversy he got himself into. At the beginning of 2017, John Tron started to talk about politics a lot. He even went onto a live stream with right wing commentator turned politician Sargon of Akkad, which that drew some attention. But what drew even more attention, both positive and negative, was when he defended at the time Iowa Republican Congressman Steve King's anti immigration views. Afterwards, he went on to the live stream of Liberal Gamer Destiny to debate him on politics. All of this caught his audience off guard, as while JonTron does have a history of making political statements for years prior to this, they were few and far between and never got too much attention. And because his content was generally apolitical, as it was just him talking about retro video games, he had a lot of different people from all over the political spectrum subscribed to him. Him. So you have a guy who is very rarely political, mainly known for talking about Banjo-Kazooie, and has a very large audience of a bunch of different people, and now he is openly making and sharing divisive statements and worldviews. You were going to get a lot of people defending him and hating him. Shortly after his appearance on Destiny's stream, there were a bunch of articles that were released that criticized him. A lot of people on the left wanted him to be cancelled, and he did face cancellation of some form. One of the consequences of John being more openly political was his voice work being removed from the spiritual successor of Banjo-Kazooie, called Ukulele. This decision was controversial among apolitical and right-wing backers of the game, and fans of John. A while back, I got to talk to Destiny about his most infamous debate, and he said he disagreed with how John was treated. He also added that he doesn't like the narrative that exists, that he was trying to destroy John Tron's career. Uh, what do you think about this whole, I guess, debate nowadays? What, what, what do you think about it, like, in retrospect? Um, I'm a little bit disappointed that people view it uh, on both sides. People viewed it as me, like, trying to destroy JonTron. I really wasn't. I don't know if, if you've listened to the whole thing or not, but, like, there were a few times where I tried to give him an out. Like, my impression of him then, and still today, was just that, like, I thought that he'd listen to a lot of really dumb shit online, and I just kind of wanted to, like, challenge him a little bit on it. My goal was never to, like, out him as a white supremacist or white nationalist or destroy his career or any cringe shit like that. But a lot of people on the left and right take it that way, so. Do you think he was treated unfairly by the media and by the left and uh, people like that? Um, I mean, I would say yes, but I think everybody is. But I think that the media and the cancel culture and all that shit is like ultra hardcore cringe and everything. John would step down from Normal Boots sometime after. While he was no longer an active member, he was still, and from my understanding even to this day, considered an honorary founder. He had not been kicked out due to his statements. Him and Gerard from The Completionist claimed the timing was coincidental, as John had already been shifting away from video game content. This seems to actually be true and not trying to save face. In fact, the last JonTron video that used the Norma Boots intro was in The Skateboard Kid from May 2016. 
All the other videos he posted after in 2016 didn't feature it. They just showed his intro. In some videos even prior to the skateboard kit didn't even have the Norma Boots logo. The brand was already becoming less prevalent on John's channel months before the controversy. Gerard Khalil, more commonly known as the Completionist, or that one video gamer, has a unique gimmick compared to everyone else we discuss in this video. While yes, he, he does review video games, he plays and discusses them, what makes him stand out is his dedication to 100% completing them, hence his name. He'll unlock every aspect of the game, collect every collectible, and unturn every stone. While, obviously, he does other content too, because 100%ing a game isn't the easiest feat in the world. It, it, it takes a while, but that's what he's best known for. He started doing this in 2012. In a CNN article, he says he started doing YouTube after an argument, while he worked at Best Buy after he graduated college, and he was trying to figure out what he wanted to do with his life. Although, it didn't go anywhere, until a chance encounter. At this time, he attempted to launch a career on YouTube four times, although it never took off in the way he wanted. In a Red Bull article, he explains how he met Aaron Hansen, of Game Grumps fame, and how that helped encourage him to not give up. He met Aaron through his friend, JonTron. Gerard then quit his job at Best Buy and spent two months creating the first video, which John and Aaron shared. Back then, a YouTube career could be born with just one shoutout. And it worked. He was given a career. He decided on The Completionist because no one else was making content beating games to a ridiculous degree. And that's just how he played video games. It started when he was a child. He would fully beat the game in hopes his parents would buy him more. Someone who helped Gerard out a lot during the early days was a man named Greg Wilmot. He had a falling out with Gerard in 2015 and stopped appearing in the videos. So I'm going to squash it all right here. Greg and I had a falling out. Friends fight. Friends bicker. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't good. And I have some bad news. He's not coming back. And I am sorry that what happened happened. And on top of all of our friendship falling out publicly for the world to see. There were business decisions that Greg and I felt very, very differently about. And unfortunately, there were so many decisions made that we disagreed upon that eventually it made us part ways and not see eye to eye anymore. And looking back, we both handled it pretty poorly. What's really interesting is in 2017, Greg had Gerard remove over 100 videos featuring him from the channel. Greg sent an email saying his termination from Gerard's company was unlawful. He added that he wasn't trying to harm the business. In his view, removing the videos wouldn't hurt because it had been two years and more videos had been made. He gave him two weeks to do this or there would be legal action. Greg wanted to do this because he never gave Gerard permission to use his likeness. And he felt removing this content would give him creative freedom. I responded to Greg saying that I would remove all the videos that he is in at his request and he never wrote back. It's with a heavy heart that I announce that I am going to be removing all 120 episodes of The Completionist. Every top 10, every Defendant, every Super Beer Bros series, and any and all goofy random videos that features Greg Wilmot and his likeness on September 1st. Here's what I'm offering. I'm giving you all 30 days to watch all of the content that Greg was a part of. You can download the content, you can burn it to DVD, you can give it out on the streets for all I care. Give it to your friends, give it to your family. It is free for you to take home today. Although it wasn't a total loss for Gerard, it actually gave him the opportunity to recreate all of those older videos. Hey everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of The Completionist New Game Plus. The show where I revisit games I've already completed to find out if my opinion has changed as I've become an older and wiser gamer. That and the first 120 episodes of The Completionist are no longer on this channel. They're on the internet somewhere. If you want to watch them, you totally can. But this is a very different show. So, you know, it worked out. It worked out for Gerard. It worked out for our buddy Gerard. Or 
I shouldn't say, but I should. I don't want to say body, and we'll get to, we'll get to that in a second. The completionist left Normal Boots in 2019. He signed with Creative Artists Agency alongside Alpha Rad in 2020. In 2021, he got to produce content for the official Sonic the Hedgehog YouTube channel. In 2022, he got to be on television during G4's short-lived revival. And now in 2023, he's making a video game, which is being published by Platonic Games, which is a company made up of ex rare employees you know they're they are the same company that removed john tron from ukulele while i was making this video he got into a massive controversy regarding his charity foundation in which he was accused of withholding over half a million dollars of donations he's received over the course of a decade the accusations come from creators carl jost and some ordinary gamers and they had the tax filings to prove it Gerard claimed he was not aware until either 2021 or 2022 that the money had not been moved, and he had been working on figuring out a way to send it. He also admitted he did spend some of the charity money to help cover expenses relating to his charity events, but he claimed he had the full amount and will be trying to donate it as soon as possible. Okay, so here's the update. While I was making this video, it took a while. <laughs> this video took a while. Carl and Mudahar released more videos. While Gerard was published publicly quiet, they pointed out Gerard's family was involved in their own charity work, and they called it a scam. In these videos, they publicly requested the authorities investigate Gerard and his family. After these videos were released, Gerard donated the $600,000 to AFTD. He then threatened a lawsuit and has gone back to posting his regular videos. I'm sure this is far from the end of the story. Maybe I can make a full documentary and going into great detail when it's over. If you guys are interested, let me know in the comments. Did You Know Gaming is a YouTube channel that produces slick videos going over video game fun facts. What makes this channel stick out is the fact the videos have consistently had different hosts and narrators, often popular YouTubers. The channel was created in 2012 and quickly took off. On Facebook, it received 20,000 page likes in about eight weeks. Did You Know Gaming was a part of Normal Boots prior to the first shutdown. They've been featured in the mainstream media, such as the Huffington Post. The creator of Digino Gaming is Shane Gill, and the channel has had a pretty consistent popularity for over the decade it's existed. Like PBG, the channel isn't as popular as it used to be back a decade ago, but it still has a sizable audience. As of recently, their second channel has had some success uploading hour-long videos discussing video game facts, specifically designed to help you fall asleep. In my opinion, Did You Know Gaming is the least interesting channel to discuss from Normal Boots, as it's just a content farm putting out gaming fun fact videos. It's not exactly the type of channel to have some huge controversy. Although, in late 2022, Nintendo of America issued a copyright takedown of one of their videos, which garnered a lot of attention, with people claiming censorship. The video was later restored. In April 2023, their channel got hacked by cryptocurrency scammers, although like the video, their channel got restored. As of making this video, the channel and Shane are still a part of Normal Boots. I think Shane controls the Normal Boots X account, as all it basically does these days is retweet Did You Know Gaming's posts. Continue is a trio who produce Let's Plays of retro video games. They joined Normal Boots in May 2011. The hosts are Nick, Paul, and Josh. Continue had one of the smaller audiences of Normal Boots. Unlike many of the other Normal Boots creators who had numerous videos crack well over a million views, Continue has never done that once, even to this day. Most of their videos now only receive a couple thousand views. Although, that's fine for them. While their audience is smaller, they seem to be very loyal, and they have a lot of members on their Patreon. According to Graftrion, they are making about $2,000 a month from Patreon alone. They left Normal Boots in 2020. This was because they were not located near the other creators. As at this time, Normal Boots was aiming to do in real life collaborations between creators. All of these creators seem to focus on a gimmick to try and separate themselves from the rest, and Progera's focus was on role-playing games. Similar to JonTron and PBG, he started off at Screw Attack, 
but was either fired due to him ignoring his obligations to focus on his personal channel, or he left to pursue his own personal projects. It's uh, it's not, it's not quite clear. Prior to Screw Attack, he was a GameStop employee. His channel was once very popular, boasting a million subscribers. He even got to guest star as himself on the Nickelodeon show Game Shakers. Sky Whale, I'm Ro Jared, and I am West. This was the final sitcom Dan Schneider made for the network, as it was poorly received in both ratings and reviews. Now, he used to have a million subs, but now he only has 800,000. So, how did this happen? Well, Pro Jared would end up facing one of the biggest online cancellations ever. On May 8th, 2019, Pro Jared posted a statement announcing his divorce, letting people know that rumors may be going around, and that he hopes he and his wife could exit their marriage with style and grace. About half an hour later, his now ex-wife would tweet out, I recently learned my husband, Pro Jared, has been fucking Holly Conrad behind my back for months, and I can't see a statement because he blocked me. He faced a bunch of other allegations around this time, such as abuse and sexting with underage fans. One allegations his now ex-wife defended him on was that his size was small, with her claiming it was actually big. You want to know why YouTube doesn't show the exact sub count on channels anymore? It was because around this time, live streams showcasing creators like Pro Jared and James Charles losing subscribers were becoming popular. YouTube removed this feature to try and curve cancellations like this. Pro Jared lost over 120k subscribers in a single day. Normal Boots would cut ties with Pro Jared during all of this, and the Game Grumps took down videos containing Jared. Pro Jared will later respond on August 27th of the same year, in a video titled You've Been Lied To, in which he denies being a sexual predator soliciting minors. For those of you who are unaware, a few months ago, some individuals circulated serious accusations against me. And I want to make it perfectly clear right now they are false. And I have proof. I have the receipts. He straight up denies talking to one of his accusers who said they sexed with him while they were underage. It's also important to note that he states that he has no evidence of us ever interacting. So all we have to go on is his word. And in an instance such as this where he has no evidence, my word is just as valid as his. And here's the thing with that. I don't remember ever talking to this person. None of what he claims sounds familiar to my memory at all. The actions he describes doesn't sound like something I would ever do. Nothing in it sounds right or familiar. And through everything that I scoured with any and all possible correspondences that I could have access to, I found nothing with Chai whatsoever. With his other accuser, he proves they lied to him, as they had claimed to be 18 when they were not. This is important because their whole narrative relied on the belief that Jaren knew they were minors while they had sexual conversations. Every single part of Charlie's allegations against me hinges on the belief that I didn't know their age and or didn't ask. They even argued that I should have known their age because they used the phrase, I am a baby, as if this somehow denotes how old they generally are, even though it's used in a context of shyness or feeling intimidated. And I did ask their age, and they lied. They also clearly knew then that they were doing something they know they shouldn't and is doing something they know I'm not okay with. They had full access to the entire conversation and omitted to all of you that they lied to me, deceiving all of you. They knew about this from the get-go, which is why on Twitter, they immediately began to backpedal on their claims. Jared also claimed he never sent them nudes. By the way, Charlie also would have seen that in our entire conversation, I never sent them a dick pic. So all these beliefs that Jared sent nudes to minors is factually untrue. 
while this is still very inappropriate, the narrative originally pushed was inaccurate, and Pro Jira's response was met with a lot of praise, receiving millions of views, and now many cite him as a content creator, falsely accused. Even PewDiePie covered his video, citing Pro Jira's situation for why he stopped making episodes of his series Pew News, which was an internet drama and news show PewDiePie used to run. There was allegations, but there was yet to be no evidence. The internet lost their mind over this pro Jared thing. The internet gets so worked up over these things. Not everyone, but most, I think majority of people don't think for themselves. They just go with the popular trend or whatever everyone else is thinking. And be like, oh, this person is bad and this person is bad. Oh, we need to do something about this. And then, oh, actually, oh, they didn't do anything bad at all. Oh, okay. It's like all these ideas are like diseases that are, that are just spread and I don't like it. And it's part of the reason why I didn't, I stopped doing punies because I hate playing it into all this drama that it doesn't mean anything. It's a waste of time. I don't want to spend my life caring about these things. Trust me, I'm doing you a favor by not doing Pew News. After the controversy, Pro Jared received support for his videos. He even had some of his normal gaming reviews crack almost a million views. Although as of now his channel seems to be on hiatus, with a fraction of the viewer base it once had. Despite no longer being a part of Normal Boots, he still collaborates with Normal Boots and Hidden Block creators. I found a VOD archive from August 2023, where he streamed with Peanut Butter Gamer and Space Hamster from Hidden Block. And when the completionist story broke, Jared publicly defended Gerard before deleting his tweet as it was clear he didn't research the topic at all. Although this shows there seemed to be no bad blood between Jared and the Normal Boots creators at the time, as he came out in defense of someone when he didn't even know the facts of what was going on. And that's true dedication there. Chatronic is the biggest outlier in the Normal Boots lineup, in my opinion. While, yes, he does discuss topics adjacent to video games, he is most well known for doing reaction type content. He finds a funny video, discusses it, and makes jokes. To be clear, this isn't the lazy type of reaction content. These are nicely edited videos. He isn't just putting a face cam in the corner and saying nothing, like people such as Jinx used to do. He garnered a lot of success around the mid 2010s. So much so, Disney XD aired some of his videos on television. They used to have a gaming block, and on this block, they got the rights to certain YouTube videos, and they just aired them on TV. And Chatronic was one of the creators who they picked. He's had a bunch of side projects over the years, such as Gloop, which was a channel where he was going to discuss Nickelodeon. However, he quickly abandoned it because he was facing copyright issues. The Gloop channel was then rebranded to Yo Joyco, which is a multimedia company Chatronic runs. In 2018, he launched a comic book under it. And as of right now, he's working on a video game. Like some of the other Normal Boots creators, he isn't a JonTron or a Pro Jared. He's never had some huge scandal that people still discuss to this very day. However, he's had a few minor, noteworthy, drama-esque moments. In 2019, YouTube closed his comment section. At the time, the platform was having serious issues with pedophilic content, specifically in the comment sections and this became a huge controversy. So they shut down a bunch of comment sections until they could figure out a better solution. Chatronic was upset about this, and he felt the situation was being abused by companies to try and get lower ad rates. And also, just so you know, advertisers will not typically pull out just because it's part of the moral high ground. They pull out so that when they want to come back, they can try to get lower advertising rates. That's, that's the real reason. I mean, they could always say it's for the moral reason that they say, but not necessarily always. It's basically just a system of everyone trying to take advantage of everyone else. In 2020, he was featured in mainstream media articles on YouTube's new child-friendly rules, which put channels like his at risk. As while he discusses media children like, he isn't a channel that targets a young audience. He's a channel for people nostalgic about the 90s. So like, yeah, he talks about Pokemon, but his content isn't made for children. It's made for man-children. And I would agree holding his content to the same standard as Baby Shark is unfair. While he was collaborating with Normal Boots creators years ago, dating at least as far back as 2016, he didn't join Normal Boots until 2021, and he's still a part of 
whatever remains of it. As of writing this, the Norma Boots website just shows a few t-shirts you can pre-order. No hosting of any type of video content or community. I checked out a few of the channels that are still connected slash associated with Norma Boots in that once iconic intro no longer plays at the beginning of the video. Nor did I see any mention of Norma Boots in the description. The Norma Boots X account is still active, although they only seem to retweet Digino Gaming. Websites like Norma Boots are a thing of the past, it seems. You don't need to create your own website to run ads on your videos. You can just upload to YouTube and run ads once your channel meets the monetization requirements, which aren't super hard to meet. And you'll get more views and make more money posting your content this way instead. It also doesn't help that Norma Boots lost their biggest star years ago, and multiple of their top creators got into massive public scandals. So I don't know if Norma Boots will relaunch once again. Judging by its history, it might, but with each passing year, the need for its existence becomes less and less important.